Now in this section, we'll discuss about the receptors for acetylcholine. So there are two main types of receptors which are stimulated by acetylcholine. These are nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Now, in order to understand the action of these receptors, we must know exactly what type of receptors these nicotinic and muscarinic receptors are. So nicotinic receptors, these are basically acetylcholine gated sodium channels. These receptors are formed of five subunits. Uh, so let us say this is one subunit, this is another subunit, third, fourth and fifth subunits and these subunits they, they form a lumen in the center. So these subunits, can, uh, they are two alpha subunits, one beta subunit, one gamma subunit and the fifth subunit can be epsilon subunit or delta subunit and in the center they form a lumen. Now the alpha subunit it has receptor for acetylcholine so two molecules of acetylcholine should combine to these receptors and these alpha receptors have projections into the lumen which keep the lumen closed but once acetylcholine binds to these receptors the lumen opens and sodium ions can enter through this lumen and it can cause depolarization of the membrane which will produce the desired effect now let's take example of a ganglion so this is a presynaptic neuron and this is a postsynaptic neuron so this postsynaptic neuron, the presynaptic neuron releases acetylcholine which acts on nicotinic receptors on, present on postsynaptic neuron. Now once these nicotinic receptors they bind to acetylcholine, they cause influx of sodium ions into the neuron which causes depolarization of the second neuron. So action potential which was initially traveling along the first neuron eventually caused entry of calcium ions, release of acetylcholine and this action potential is then propagated into the second neuron. So this is how this um, acetylcholine uh, works in nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors, they can broadly be classified into an N type of receptors and an M type of receptors. Now, an N type of nicotinic receptors, they are present at the junction of nerve and nerve that's at the site of ganglion and other than ganglion, they are also present in adrenal medulla and central nervous system. Now, they are present in ganglion, adrenal medulla and central nervous system and everywhere they basically cause influx of sodium ions into the membrane that causes depolarization. So uh, we already discussed the function of these receptors in the ganglion. So this is a ganglion and their function is to carry on action potential from one neuron to another neuron. Now let us discuss their function adrenal medulla. So let us take an example if this is the adrenal gland and in the center it is adrenal medulla. If this is the preganglionic fiber which causes release of acetylcholine and NN receptors are present in adrenal medulla. So once these receptors are stimulated it causes increased synthesis of norepinephrine in the adrenal medulla and this norepinephrine is eventually converted into epinephrine which is released in the circulation and it acts on different types of muscarinic receptors on target organ. An interesting fact to note here is that this epinephrine is synthesized only in the adrenal medulla whereas norepinephrine is synthesized almost in every tissue of the body. This is because the, this conversion requires a presence of cortisol which is present which is secreted only by adrenal cortex so that is the reason why epinephrine is synthesized only in adrenal medulla. So we discussed the functions of nicotinic receptors in ganglion and adrenal medulla so now we will discuss their function in central nervous system. So they cause sodium influx in uh, uh, which results in depolarization and causes excitation of brain. Uh, now this is significant whenever there is nicotinic toxicity that can cause a very high excitation of brain and can even result in seizures. So these were the functions of an N type of nicotinic receptors. We also have an M type of nicotinic receptors which are present at the junction of nerve and muscle that's at neuromuscular junction and their function is to cause contraction of the muscle. Uh, now. Uh, they will cause depolarization of the membrane of muscle that is sarcolima which will eventually cause contraction through excitation contraction coupling and contraction of the muscle. Now for contraction of muscle it's uh, important to note that uh, optimal stimulus is required for contraction of muscle. It means if less stimulus is present or less acetylcholine is present that will result in muscle weakness and if more acetylcholine is present that will also result in muscle weakness. So these are two similar conditions which will be differentiated later on. So these were the NM type of receptors and their functions. Now let's have a discussion of muscarinic receptors. We should know that uh, muscarinic, all types of muscarinic receptors are examples of G protein coupled receptors. So in order to understand their function, we should know exactly what the G protein coupled receptors are. So let us consider this is part of cell membrane and this is a G protein coupled receptor in which the ligand binding part is present on the outer side. It eventually pierces cell membrane and then goes into several uh, seven transmembrane folds. Uh, which comes which comes out uh, of the membrane and then again goes back into the cytoplasm and once it is settled it binds to certain proteins called as G proteins these are alpha, beta and gamma and alpha subunit is attached to GDP. Now once uh, ligand say acetylcholine binds to the receptor part it causes phosphorylation of this alpha 
जी डी पी एंड एल्फा जी टी पी एंड एट द सेम टाइम इट दिस एल्फा जी टी पी डिसोसिएट फ्राम बीटा एंड गामा सब यूनिट्स सो एल्फा जी टी पी विल प्रोड्यूस सेपरेट एक्शन ऑफ इट्स ओन एंड बीटा एंड गामा सब यूनिट्स विल प्रोड्यूस ए डिफरेंट एक्शन एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द एक्शन ऑफ एल्फा सब यूनिट दिस एल्फा सब यूनिट कैन बी एल्फा एस एंड इन दैट केस द जी प्रोटीन का प्रोड्यूस एप्टाइज कर जी एस सिमिलरली एल्फा आई एल्फा ओ एंड now this alpha o exactly uh, the action is because of beta and gamma subunits and alpha q which the g protein coupled receptor is called a gq sub type of g protein coupled receptor in case of gs a sub type of g protein coupled receptor we have alpha s gtp now this alpha s gtp it causes phosphorylation of adenylate cyclase enzyme uh, which causes increase in the levels of cyclic amp and uh, while, while it phosphorylates adenylate cyclase it itself is converted to alpha gdp which again binds to beta and gamma subunits now this adenylate cyclase will cause increase in the levels of cyclic amp and these increased level of cyclic amp will stimulate protein kinase now the action of this protein kinase will depend on the location of this receptor uh, if it's present in the smooth muscle it this protein kinase will cause phosphorylation and thus inhibition of myosin light chain kinase which is responsible for contraction of smooth muscle and as a result there will be inhibition of this enzyme and relaxation of smooth muscle so in case of smooth muscle it will cause relaxation and in skeletal and cardiac muscle this protein kinase will phosphorylate calcium channels and thus open them which will increase calcium influx and cause contraction of these muscles so actions are different in smooth muscle and cardiac as well as skeletal muscles now let's talk about gq gi and go sub type of receptors in gq sub type of receptors we have alpha q gtp which causes activation of phospholipase c this phospholipase c is responsible for breaking phosphoenolestrol diphosphate into ip3 and diacylglycerol now the receptors for ip3 are present on sarcoplasmic reticulum and once it binds to these receptors it causes release of calcium intracellularly from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which results in contraction of smooth muscle as well as other skeletal and cardiac muscles now gi sub type of receptors it is characterized by presence of alpha i gtp and it causes decrease in the levels of cyclic amp and it opens potassium channels which causes hyperpolarization so its effects are opposite to gs sub type of g protein coupled receptors now go this effect is exactly due to beta and gamma subunits they also cause decrease in the levels of calcium and they open potassium channels which result in inhibition inhibitory effect they also cause hyperpolarization now these two effects gi and go sub type of effects they coexist so most often we use the term gi slash o Ascrinic receptors they can be divided into five types M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5. Now out of these M1, M3, and M5 they are GQ subtype of G protein coupled receptors. It means all of these receptors will cause increase in intracellular calcium. While as M2 and M4 are GI slash O subtype of G protein coupled receptors. Now it is important to know the location of these receptors, which can be remembered by a simple mnemonic: पहले खाओ फिर दिल लगाओ बाकी काम बाद में. So पहले खाओ means uh, first we have to eat so m1 receptors they are primarily present in git in the gastric gland and their function in the gastric gland is to cause free secretion of acid and fir dil laga so m2 receptors are predominantly present in heart baki kaam baad mein that means m3 receptors are present at other places which include bronchi that is bronchial smooth muscle they are present in bladder in the retrusor muscle they are present in eye in the circular muscle of iris and uh, they are also present in uh, in several glands and they are present in smooth muscle gi smooth muscle m4 and m5 type of receptors are complex receptors they are present in central nervous system and they regulate the release of neurotransmitters in the central nervous system now m1 receptors are also present in central nervous system and in git their function is to cause increased production of gastric acid by increasing the levels of calcium as they are gq sub type of receptors Uh, so this is significant in peptic ulcer disease because the main aggressive factor is acid and a de decreased acid production is achieved by causing block of these m1 receptors m2 receptors are present in heart is a inhibitory type of receptor so they are present in sa node and av node m2 receptors are present in the heart in sa node and in the av node and being inhibitory type of receptors they will inhibit their functions it means they will cause decrease in heart rate as well as decrease in conduction so excess stimulation of these receptors can cause various degrees of av block now m3 receptors they are also gq sub type of receptors means they will cause increase in the levels of intracellular calcium they are present in bronchi in bronchi increase in levels of calcium will cause contraction of bronchial smooth muscle resulting in bronchoconstriction in bladder contraction of retrusor because of increased calcium will cause widening of urine and in the eye these are present in the circular muscles of eye so this is circular muscle of eye and these are radial muscles contraction of circular muscle will result in the narrowing of the pupil and this is called as meiosis 
Now, in GI smooth muscle, they increase calcium because of the GQ subtype of receptors, which cause increase in contractions and it can predispose to diarrhea. And in the blood vessels, effects are a bit complex. We'll, we'll get to them soon. So, in the blood vessel, M3 receptors are present at two locations. They are present on the endothelium of the blood vessel as well as on the smooth muscle in the tunica media. Now, before this, we must know that these receptors are present in the blood vessels, but cholinergic innervation is normally not present in these blood vessels. So, these receptors are stimulated only by circulating catecholamines or pre injected drug which inhibit on these receptors. Now, on the endothelium, stimulation of these M3 receptors will cause increase in intracellular calcium because they are GQ subtype of receptors, and this calcium will stimulate calcium dependent nitric oxide synthase, which will cause increase in the levels of nitric oxide. It will diffuse to the smooth muscle and cause vasodilation. So, in and once and these receptors on endothelium are stimulated, it causes vasodilation by stimulation of calcium dependent nitric oxide synthase. However, if these receptors are stimulated in the smooth muscle, it will cause increase in levels of calcium, which will cause contraction of smooth muscle and thus vasoconstriction. So, effects are different. Now, in a normal person, that means the uh, endothelium is completely intact, there will be there will not be stimulation of M3 receptors in smooth muscle, rather there will be stimulation of M3 receptors on endothelium. So the prominent effect will be vasodilation. However, in injured vessel, this acetylcholine will diffuse to the M3 receptors in smooth muscle and it will cause vasoconstriction. Now it is also quite evident whenever there is injury, the first step is to decrease the, and the bleeding is by vasoconstriction. Now let's have a look at different types of choline esterases in the body. Now these there are two main types of acetylcholine esterases in the body. These are true choline esterase, also called as acetylcholine esterase, and butyrylcholine esterase, which is called as pseudocholine esterase. Now, this acetylcholine esterase main location of this esterase is in the synapse, and the function of this acetylcholine esterase is uh, it causes it causes the action of acetylcholine to end by metabolizing acetylcholine whereas function of butyrylcholine esterase is that it metabolizes ingested esters the main location of acetylcholine esterase is in the synapse it's also present in rbcs and gray matter of brain and in the location of butyrylcholine is in plasma git liver and in the white matter of brain now acetylcholine esterase as already said is called true choline esterase butyrylcholine esterase is called pseudocholine esterase and it is a non-specific type of esterase whereas acetylcholine esterase is specific type of esterase butyrylcholine esterase now now acetylcholine esterase it it metabolizes acetylcholine very fast and it can metabolize methacholine but slowly and butyrylcholine esterase as the name says it metabolizes butyrylcholine quite fast and it can metabolize acetylcholine but slowly it cannot metabolize methacholine 